Good evening everyone and welcome to our study tonight, Tuesday, May 19. Dear Lord, this evening we pray for forgiveness from saints. May you bless us with wisdom to be given by your spirit. For I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Last night we discussed about the literalness of the days of creation. And we said that that is indirectly an attack against the Sabbath day. Tonight is a study of the Sabbath and creation. A continuation of the days of creation, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. God finished all His work of, of creation and He created one more day. In that day, the seventh day, is not for man but for Him. But the benefits of the Sabbath day is not for Him but for all mankind. In our study guide, we are provided with some concrete examples of the attacks against the Sabbath. Number one is the attempt to make Monday as the first day of the week. That is a direct attack. The people will be accustomed to think that the first day of the week is Monday. And therefore, the seventh day would be Sunday. See there? The second is making now Sunday as the seventh day to replace the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day. And the church has called the seventh day Sabbath as the Jewish Sabbath. We will discuss that one tonight. And of course, the church's uh, insistence of observing a day of rest to minimize global warming. And we quote that from Pope Francis, Laudato Si, Vatican City, Vatican Press 2015, pages 172 and 170. Our first passage is Genesis 2, 1 to 3, I call it a model Sabbath. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. So you see, day 1 to 6, God completed the works of doing those activities and completing it as a climax of creation, He created the seventh day for Him. But that day in its benefits would be for humanity. There are three very important things that we take note that God did on the seventh day that He did not do on the six days. During the six days of creation, God pronounced blessings on the creation things and uh, life like animals and man. But on the seventh day, God pronounced the blessing on the day itself. So the first thing that God did on that creation Sabbath day was to rest from his work. The rest does not suggest he was tired. He rested because there was nothing to do. He completed his work. He was not exhausted. The rest there was a model for humanity. Our bodies have been designed by the Creator that we work only six days a week, we need to rest on the seventh day. Okay? The second thing that Jesus did on the seventh day was to bless the day. And the third is sanctify or made it holy. So these are the three things that are unique compared to other days of the week. The second passage is Exodus 28 to 11. I call it commanded Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days Days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This Sabbath day is included by the Lord in the Ten Commandments. So the first Sabbath day was kept by God with Adam and Eve. Years later, when the people of Israel brought out by God out of Egypt through Moses at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Lord has given the Ten Commandments and right in the middle of the commandment was the Sabbath commandment. And the third account of the Sabbath is found in Revelation 14 verse 7. 
I call it accounted Sabbath. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Allow me to put these three verses together so that you may see the whole thing. We have there the red boxes. I put it Sabbath accounts, Sabbath in Genesis, Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Another Sabbath accounts that we're studying tonight is the Sabbath in Exodus, that is the commanded Sabbath, and then the Sabbath in Revelation, found in Revelation 14, verse 7. The Sabbath in Genesis, I call it Model Sabbath, in which God rested, He blessed it, and He sanctified the Sabbath. The intention of creating that Sabbath day is for the benefit of mankind. It is not for Adam and Eve, nor for the Jewish people. Because when Jesus was here in Mark 2.27, He said that the Sabbath was made for man. It is not made for the Jews, contrary to the teachings of the big church, the Christian church, in which the seventh-day Sabbath is for the Jews. No. Based on the biblical teaching, Jesus Himself said that the purpose why the Sabbath was made is not for the Jews. It's not for Adam and Eve only, but it is for humanity. So therefore, so long as you consider yourself human beings, the Sabbath is for you. And that was given by God to bless us and to sanctify us and for us to have rest from labor, rest from sin, rest from worry. Therefore, the Sabbath is a total blessing of God from the Creator. Now, that model Sabbath was enacted by God through the Ten Commandments. So that is the relationship. There was that model and then that was actually put into the law. It was enacted. It was commanded by God. Again, for man to have rest, for man to be blessed, and for man to be sanctified or made holy. Ezekiel 20 verse 12 says, The Sabbath was given as a sign for God's people and to sanctify them. So that is a special day at the end of the week so that people will remember the creation and that the creation will be sanctified by the Lord. Okay? So that is the relationship of the model Sabbath. It was enacted and then in the last days, particularly found in the book of Revelation, that Sabbath, I call it accounted Sabbath. Fear God and give glory, give Him glory because the judgment has come and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Revelation 14, 7. In the last days, just before Jesus closed the history of planet earth, the issue will be Sabbath keeping. And there are two Sabbaths now among the Christians. The seventh day Sabbath, which is the original Sabbath that is a sign for God's people. And the second Sabbath Sabbath is actually the Sabbath that was made by man, commanded by man, and that is the first day of the week, the Sunday Sabbath, so-called Sabbath for Christians. And these two Sabbaths will collide in the last days. But God will have accounting for all the things that the Lord has done for His people and also the accounting or the judgment of God will be based on His commandment. And part of the commandment is a Sabbath commandment. How we relate with the Sabbath and how we relate with the Creator, there will be an accounting. And I hope that we fear God and we give Him glory, we worship Him on the day the Lord has specified. The presentation tonight is not intended to have a detailed discussion on the Sabbath day. But if you're interested, you are not a seven-day Adventist and you want to know more about this, you may contact a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church near your place and he will be happy to give you a detailed study on the Sabbath day. To have further reflections, I coined this from Genesis chapter 2, 1 to 3. Let me keep your Sabbath holy, O Lord, that I I may find rest for my body, soul, and spirit, and sanctify me on this day by your word. I hope you agree or strongly agree with this statement. We need the Sabbath day that the Lord has designed for us, that we may rest for our bodies, 
for our souls and for our spirit. And on this day, the Lord has designated it to keep or to make us holy. That is a requirement for us to enter into the very presence of God. His people must be holy because God is holy. Father in heaven, thank you for your presence tonight and for the enlightenment that this seventh day Sabbath during the creation week was modeled by the creator himself. So we as human beings may follow it so that when the time comes, we will be accounted worthy to enter the kingdom prepared for the righteous one. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.